The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Tobin here on the Soybean School. Today I'm at the Mary Hill Research Farm, the BSF Research Farm, with Rob Miller. Rob, how's it going? Great. How you doing, Bernard? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Now, we're cold today. We both had to sort of get on our woolies, shall we say. Last week we were in shorts. I mean, last fall, open fall, a warm winter. Uh, boy, what's the weed situation looking like here? Yeah, definitely. Well, the weeds definitely woke up with the, like you said, the old open fall warmer than normal winter we never really had winter yeah. here in ontario at least the snow cover until you know march and that's where you know we're getting a lot of questions on weed control especially on cover crops that didn't die that you would expect would die over that winter but since they had some nice snow cover it was warmer than normal you know we're starting to see um, a lot of that regrowth here as well so um, things like oats uh, is probably the main one but this field behind me is actually winter wheat volunteer winter wheat mm -hmm. and this actually had two passes of a of a uh, disc and one fall burn down application you can see the amount of volunteer wheat that we're dealing with this year as well so it's just not cover crops that mm. uh, overwintered it's just you know a lot of those winter annuals and perennials we're getting a lot of those ones because they have been growing for the last couple of years no couple I, couple weeks i'm seeing some a lot of chickweed here what's that tell you yeah chickweed is always that good indicator uh, weed species and it's actually starting to flower now at, in some spots and if the chickweed's flowering and you know it tends to germinate throughout that winter we saw it at christmas time we saw it you know in early march before we had some of that snow cover and that's where if the chickweed is flowering that means a lot of the other winter annuals and perennials are still growing so they're not necessarily growing vegetatively mm. but they're definitely putting down uh, some larger roots so things like the flea bane the uh the dandelion especially we're seeing some pretty large dandelions don't look that big from the uh, on top of the soil surface but they're starting to get a really large thick root on them and that's going to be difficult to control yeah another weed that you talked about that you need, probably it's going to be on your radar screen as well it's bluegrass yeah bluegrass especially on some of those heavier clays but you know even driving around you know parts of uh, southwestern ontario seeing a lot more of the annual bluegrass and the rough stock bluegrass tends to be more in the Guelph area north. So there's two main types of bluegrass species that we have here in Ontario, the annual bluegrass, the rough stock bluegrass, but the annual group bluegrass tends to grow in a lot of clumps. Mm. And after talking at a lot of our winter meetings this year, a lot of growers are coming up and asking about, you know, how do we control that bluegrass? Because you just spray it with glyphosate, the next day it starts to germinate. Mm. And since it does glow in these, grow in these clumps, it's really tough to do any sort of tillage because it comes up lumpy seed bed. And, uh, you know, there's not really too many products out there outside of, uh, you know, some soil applied group 15s like Zidjo SC that will have some so form of activity on it. So it germinates in the fall as well as on the spring. It tends to be more of an issue on some of those heavier clays, but we're starting to see it move in across the province to other areas as well. Mm. Hey, um, we always like to talk about, we unfortunately talk about resistance uh, and weed resistance. Um, conversations this week, and you've heard them over the winter, mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, group 14 resistance ragweeds, a real issue for IP soybean growers. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we have common ragweed here that's now resistant, confirmed with the University of Guelph, Francois Tardif, to group 14 herbicides. We also have populations that are resistant to glyphosate, group two, as well as the triazine, group fives. So that's where, especially if you're growing IP soybeans, that's gonna be a, a major challenge. So the main thing with dealing with some of these resistant weed species is that, you know, control them and out of the crops if you are growing IP soybeans or, or dry beans there as well. So have a really good solid foundation in your corn crop, making sure that you uh, control some of those uh, ragweed seeds after the wheat has been harvested, avoiding it from going to seed, and also starting to use that herbicide layering approach. So having some residual down at planting, controlling it early, aggressive scouting before it gets too big, having some residual down in crop to try to get you through the, uh, the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Now, Rob, you mentioned the importance of aggressive scouting. Um, you know, you talked also about cover crops, some of those things that didn't die. How important now is it to get those soil applied herbicides down and working? Uh, definitely, especially since these weeds are getting a lot larger. And, you know, something like the cover crop oats, you know, they're end volunteer wheat. It's pretty sensitive to glyphosate, you know, um, but you want to make sure that you use the proper rates based on what's in the field. So, uh, you know, glyphosate at this time of year in these conditions is very slow. You're looking at at least two weeks and you want to control those uh, 
that cover crop at least two weeks before you can plant your corn or your soybean crop. So it's going to be slow, but you know, if you're using lower rates based on you know, control and volunteer wheat, you're giving up some activity on some of those larger perennial weeds. So yeah. uh, you know, select the rate that's required based on the field and then add in that second additional mode of action. That's very important. And getting it on early, especially prior to the fleabane bolting, prior to the dandelion flowering, before those weeds get too big, you know, you want to apply to more actively growing weeds and that's where you get much better weed control. So it's actually better to, to spray it on more of a warming trend. Right. You get much faster uh, on the tail end, much faster, more consistent weed control um, in terms of, you know, instead of grow, trying to apply some of these, uh, these products in this type of weather. Right. What about tillage? We still uh, have some room to fit that in? Yes, definitely. So uh, if you're doing any tillage, you know, a field like this, you want to try and get on here and spray prior to do any type of tillage, especially if you're doing any of the uh, you know the high speed disc that's not really a good form of weed control it's more for seed bed preparation um, you know but when you have you know a lot of lot of corn stalks or something like that that you kind of chop up they sometimes cover up those weeds and actually make them much harder to kill hmm. and these perennial weeds that have some larger roots you know we want to make sure that we get that uh, that product on them uh, very early before they get too big hey final point and that is you know you mentioned it before we, we came on on the uh, camera here and that is about you know grow a good crop um, you know, make good decisions, um, get that canopy closed. That could be some of the most effective weed control you can do. Absolutely. So, you know, it's just not about chemical uh, control. You got to look at that integrated weed management approach. So, you know, getting that crop off to the best start possible, crop canopy is your best form of weed control, shading out those weeds. So that's looking at, you know, your row spacing, but even just growing in good or planting in good ideal conditions, getting that crop out of the ground, uniform emergence, and also utilizing cover crops as well, uh, whether it's interseeding or after the wheat comes off, um, controlling that different times of the year, and also, you know, good crop rotation as well. Yeah. That's very important as well. Great stuff, Rob. Always good to have you on the Soybean School. We'll be planting before long, and we'll be back in the field uh, later in the summer. How about that? Yeah, thanks for having me.